I'm Loretta Nostapil. I'm from the Department of Lymphoma Myeloma at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. I've been specializing in the treatment of B-cell lymphomas for the last 10 years. If we think back 20 years ago, rituximab entered into the treatment landscape and that was the first form of immune therapy. So essentially it's an antibody that sticks to the surface of lymphoma cells and then the immune system that's just passing by will see that and react to that just like it's an infection. And that changed things dramatically in terms of people lived a lot longer after we saw rituximab enter into the treatment landscape. This is a new iteration of that where it's got two heads. One head binds to the surface of the lymphoma cell just like rituximab did. The other head actually engages the T cells that are just circulating, so it activates them, potentially even introduces them into that microenvironment. And so we think this is a better way to use the immune system without having to actually take the T cells out of the body and modify them. We currently have approval with mosentuzumab in follicular lymphoma and then two for diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, epcritimab and glofitimab. We anticipate there will be more approvals because you could imagine that anywhere rituximab or a CD20 targeting antibody worked, these bispecifics will have activity. essentially every single B cell. So the, they currently target CD20. There are others in development, including a CD19 targeting by specific. Um, there will be others in T cell and Hodgkin, for instance, because we have targets such as CD30. Uh, so they're essentially being developed in every single lymphoma subtype. There will be more options for B cell lymphomas because they're further along. We're actually really excited about this because again, if we look backwards over time, tinkering with chemotherapy and even to some extent targeted therapy didn't really make a dramatic improvement in how long people lived. Rituximab did. So this is another way to manipulate the immune system without having to take again those cells out of the body, which we'll talk about CAR T cells I'm sure in a second. Uh, so I do think this will provide broader access to patients in a form of immune therapy that's essentially easier to deliver. So this really does activate T cells, and if you think about what T cells do when they're behaving normally, they will create a firestorm to get rid of infection. And so cytokine release syndrome is what we see most commonly. So it's essentially a flu-like syndrome. Fever, chills, achiness, fatigue, uh, sometimes headache, a little mild confusion has been described. Fortunately, that's short in duration. None of these symptoms actually last that long. Uh, now, they can come with more severity in terms of low blood pressure, low oxygen levels. Those are the situations we get a little nervous about, and we want patients to transition to an inpatient setting quickly. important thing is talk to their doctor. Uh, right now there are some nuances in terms of where they're currently FDA approved. Again, there are a lot of trials still underway, so there will be more opportunity in the future, but as of right now, they're only approved in that third line or later setting. So that means patients who've had at least two prior treatments, lymphoma went into remission, came back, uh, and so it is a little limited at this point, uh, but again, we anticipate there'll be more options in the future.